Batman the Animated Series is beloved by all. It stars the great Kevin Conroy, may he rest in peace, as Batman, as Bruce Wayne. And one of the co-creators of Batman the Animated Series, Bruce Timm, is making a comeback with a more noir-style animated show. However, it seems that despite our initial excitement, he has made some decisions in the past and also appearing looking forward that give me pause. Hi everyone, welcome to the Studio Jake vidcast, and it's true, all of it. I, of course, am your host, Jacob Airy. We will be diving into an interview that Bruce Tim gave about Batman Cape Crusader, an upcoming animated series for Prime Video, which is, of course, Amazon's streaming service. Now, growing up, Batman the Animated Series was my all-time favorite animated show. And to this day, that stands the reason. It's what opened up my world to comic books, to the superhero genre, to science fiction in some cases. And it brought everything together with its grounded realism and its dynamic storytelling, not to mention the incredible voice cast, which earlier I mentioned the late great Kevin Conroy. Now, Bruce Timm wasn't a solo party in the show, and he will be the first to admit it. In fact, what brought him to it was an offer by, at the time, Fox Kids, for they aired this show, even though it was made by Warner Brothers Animation Studio. But he partnered with uh, two men, Paul Denny and Alan Bernay. And the, the those three did an amazing job. There's no... Uh, there's no kidding about that. Paul Denny and Bruce Tim, of course, created Harley Quinn together. And she was voiced by, again, the late, great Eileen Sorkin, who to this day has never been topped as Harley Quinn. That's just an objective fact, and you're going to have to get over it. Now, with this new show, Paul Denny and Alan Bernay don't appear involved in it at all. Uh, similar to the Harley Quinn, the animated series, which that showrunner has pretended like he created Harley Quinn, what a jerk. Anyway, in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Bruce Tim laid out some facts about the show. Some of them seem pretty cool. I'm going to admit it. The animation looks great. However, he said some things that, as a Batman fan, it's given me a little bit of pause. So I'm going to read the interview and kind of comment based on what it says. So Batman has been around for more than 80 years now. And in that time, Bob Kane and Bill Finger's dark uh, vigilante has been the subject of countless comic books, cartoons, and movie. This is how the interviewer introduces it. And then continues on. Batman Crate Crusader was first announced as an HBO Max series in 2021 and then was saved by Amazon Prime Video after Max eventually passed on the project. It is now set to debut later this year. In a new interview with Entertainment Weekly, Tim and character designer James Tucker say that the number one priority of Batman Cape Crusader is making sure it wasn't just a repeat of Batman the Animated Series. The best way they to do that, they decided, was to make the new show fully a 40-set period piece rather than repeating the anachronistic jumble of computers and payphones that define Batman the Animated Series. I think that's great. Batman originally premiered in 1939, just a year behind Superman. And the 40s, especially 40s and going into the 50s, his um, character was more like what you would see of the Shadow. He wasn't really a comic book hero. He was sort of a noir vigilante that haunted the streets of Gotham City, which wasn't the original name for the city, by the way. That was something Bill Finger came up with. And... I think that would be really cool. We have seen Batman in the 40s. There's those black and white, you know, theatrical shorts. But to see it kind of fully developed, that sounds pretty cool to me. I'm going to be real. So <clears throat> this is uh, Bruce Tim speaking. James and I are both really big fans of movies from that era. So we decided to really learn or lean into that in terms of the clothes, the cars, the architecture, and the level of technology. Tim says that the new show is setting. Early on, we decided there'd be no computers and no cell phones. That changed everything. In addition to using 40s noir films as a reference point, Tim and Tucker also have the actual Batman comics from that era, which featured the first appearances of characters like Catwoman and Clayface to draw on for inspiration. There, but there are also elements of Cape Crusader that no Batman fans have seen before. Okay, now this is where 
I start to get a little dicey with it. Harley Quinn in particular looks much different than any of her appearances, including her, her origin in Batman the Animated Series. The new show characterizes her as Asian American and also separates her from her longtime partner in crime. Whether in her solo animated series or in the upcoming live-action film Joker 2, Harley Quinn, a.k.a. Dr. Harleen Quinzel, is still typically defined by her relationship with the, uh, with the clown prince of crime. Tim wanted to change that. I co-created the character, so I have a lot of love and affection for her, but I thought there might be something interesting about bringing her on in the show, just not as Joker's girlfriend, Tim says. So how do we do that? A big part of that is doing a basic flip. The original Dr. Quinzel was a little bit more serious. And then when she became Harley, she got really goofy and weird. So we thought, what if we reverse that? When she's Dr. Quinzel, she's a little bit more whimsical and fun. And then when she's Harley Quinn, she's scary. The two halves of Harley's personality are also connected in Cape Crusader. Instead of abandoning her day job after becoming a gesture theme supervillain, this version of Harley uses psych psychiatry psychiatry as a weapon tim teases rather than catering to the joker and other criminally insane residents of arkham asylum the dr quinzel cape crusader is a normal gotham city psychiatrist in fact she gets assigned to treat none other than bruce wayne himself in doing so she gets to experience firsthand the strange version of batman that tim and tucker want to explore all right so first of all i thought i debated going back and forth on whether i would put up um, Harley's costume. I've decided not to. By the way, Jester Bell, a friend of the channel, that YouTube channel hosted, of course, by Reese, she does a fantastic job breaking down Harley Quinn and her reaction to Harley Quinn specifically. So go also and check out her stuff. But I also wanted to just put my two cents in here. I never thought I would say this. Bruce Tim has kind of become a sellout. He and Paul Denny created Harley Quinn to be a foil for the Joker, similar to how, you know, Batwoman was at one time for Batman. And the Joker in Batman the Animated Series, he was so unique compared to other iterations of the character. He needed, you know, that extra hype person to get him going. And now, because DC Comics wanted a Deadpool knockoff, They've completely removed her from the Joker. She's gone through bad new costume after bad new costume, and then now bad um, new costume all over again. It's this vicious cycle, and it's so disappointing. And it's not just Tim, Bruce Tim. Paul Denny has done this as well. He's completely abandoned what Harley Quinn used to be and what she stu stood for. We see that in the new Suicide Squad game. We see that in the new Suicide Squad films and the Birds of Prey films. It's just absolutely bonkers that the two creators of Harley Quinn are abandoning their own lore, their own source material, which was superior to anything about Harley Quinn that has been pu pushed out, maybe with the exception of Batman Arkham Asylum. That, that, would, be a, that would be an exception. But it is just maddening to me that they are allowing their creation to evolve in this way. I should say devolve. It's a regression of the character. It's not an improvement. And I'm just so saddened by this. I would think that creators would want to protect that thing that they themselves created, right? You would hope that. But Harley Quinn is going to be offered up on the woke altar just to please a few pervs quite frankly on social media and it's disappointing it's regressive it's stupid quite frankly i want to see harley quinn her and by the way i'm so tired of people saying harley quinn is a victim was she manipulated by the joker absolutely but she herself decided to become his girlfriend and pursued him it wasn't the other way around yes he messed with her mind a little bit he tricked her he deceived her okay yes he's a bad guy that's what bad guys do but she brought everything else upon herself and there's no personal accountability with her in regards to this and it's so disappointing that now bruce tim wants to remove his own creation from that and he said a lot more things that i'm going to get into especially regarding batman but i'm going to tell you something you'll have to wait for part two for that one Hi everyone, if you liked that video, be sure to like, share, subscribe, ring that little bell so you get notifications. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to sign up and become a channel member. You get all kinds of cool perks. There's four different tiers you can sign up for. I would love to have you 
on board. I will be doing a live stream very soon where I'll be talking more about pop culture stuff. Hey, and if you don't want to support me on Big Tech, you're watching on another platform, head on over to my Locals page. The link is in the description. You can also support small creators like me there. Thank you so much for watching. Cause I've been living life right like I could just die any